All right, as promised, we're joined right now by a linebacker for the Atlanta Falcons. Seven tackles and a pass defense in Sunday's win over Carolina. Second in the NFL in tackles with 142 this season. Seven quarterback hits, three tackles for a loss, three passes defensed. He's got that INT. He's got a forced fumble. He was an all-Ivy League player at Yale. 200th pick in the 2018 draft. Atlanta is second in the NFC South. They're very much in the hunt, and they have a huge game in San Francisco on Sunday. Foyer Aluakin is my guest. Foyer, good to have you on. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Great to visit. All right, so you're coming off a big performance in Sunday's win over Carolina, and that win did keep you guys in the hunt. How does it feel to be coming to the facility every day in December, knowing that you have a chance to get into the postseason? Oh, it's, it's definitely a good feeling playing meaningful football in December. Uh, definitely a lot of work, a lot of focus to be had every day we come into practice. So it's just always cool to uh, you know have that opportunity to be on edge. Uh, definitely playing for something this late in the season. All right, so going back to Sunday on Michael Walker's pick six, I thought you did a masterful job of blocking on Cam Newton and making sure that he did not get to Walker while also not drawing a flag. What did you see on that play? Yeah, uh, it's always uh, uh, Michael always talks about you know blocking the most athletic or athletic quarterbacks whenever he gets the ball. So um, really, I saw the opportunity to block Cam. It seemed like he had the angle and uh, just making sure I kind of had a special teams background talking about a flyby instead of the old peelback block, which we probably would have done earlier. You know, in our football careers, uh, just making sure I didn't mess it up for Michael so he could get to the end zone. I was going to say, was it like back in the day, maybe earlier in your football career, that if there was a pick six and the quarterback was out there in the open field oh, and there was fair game, what? were you going to take that shot back in the day if you could? Of course. I mean, that's the kind of hit that everybody talks about. Uh, those that end up on those like big hit highlight takes. Uh, you know, it's always fun to have that peel back block. I think everybody kind of lived for that uh, back in the day when, when the ball carrier is running and somebody didn't see you and you could uh, knock them down real quick. I like that. I appreciate that response, man. That's real. <laughs> Foyer Luikin is joining us. Also, knowing the way you used to spring Ezekiel Elliott for touchdowns back in the day at John Burroughs High in St. Louis, I know you're a solid blocker. What were you like in high school as a receiver, a DB, mm-hmm. and a blocker? Um, yeah, I, I, at that point, I was just you know doing whatever the team needed me to do to win. Uh, you know, freshman year, that's when I was more of a fullback. Uh, definitely got the ball a lot on boot plays, just kind of getting me out in the in the flat. And then by sophomore year, I became more of a receiver on offense. So, um, kind of an all around, I guess, athlete. Um, it was fun running routes and catching the ball and running deep, deep fades and all that. And then really the DB, um, you know, I was a pretty, I guess, hard hitting DB, uh, still in the run fits. Uh, so like play actions actually got me a little bit into college. That was a little funny. Um, but, you know, I was just kind of a, a, a good athlete out there, so I kind of used that to my advantage. You know it. Foyer, Lloyd is joining us. Let's get technical for a minute. Like, I want to talk about your journey, but before we do that, I've talked with linebackers over the years, and the phrase, I discipline, comes up all the time. Your inside linebackers coach, Frank Bush, says that playing middle linebacker, quote, there's so much going on that if your eyes are not trained correctly, it can consume you, end of quote. I think that's pretty interesting. Like, how are you able to take in everything that's going on and identify the things that are most important to focus on and look at? Um, definitely just repetition and practice uh, and just a lot of film study, uh, just making sure that we are looking at the right things because a lot of times, especially a team like San Francisco, they're going to do a lot of things in the backfield to kind of draw your eyes away from where the ball is actually going. So uh, a lot of it's just, you know, being patient back there. Don't just trigger on on what you see back there, just making sure that, your eyes are right, as Coach Bush said, and playing linebacker with patiently uh, with good feet. Here's the other thing, too. You've made the comparison that it's like math. Lay that out for me. How do you apply math or the lessons you learn from math to playing linebacker? How is it like math? Yeah, uh, we're talking about just like pattern learning. Uh, that's kind of where you learn what, what I learned back in like you know elementary school patterns and stuff. Um, how you know inputs and outputs. So. Um, a lot of times, like, I, I was talking to somebody today, we count to three a lot, like let's say a, a different coverage or something, we got to relate to three or relate to two or something. But in the backfield, you know, we got pullers and all that stuff, or maybe if three crosses your face, you got to relate to the new three and stuff. So you got to be able to, you know, adapt within the play and be able to see the patterns that are happening in front of you so you know where you fit in, in that play. He was an all-Ivy League player at Yale. Foyer Lewikin is joining us right now, Falcons linebacker. So Dean Pease comes in as the D coordinator this year. Pretty clear the love and respect he has for you. What's it been like for you to play for him? 
Yeah, I just always try to uh, earn his respect for him since the first day. Um, you know, I was out there uh, running around for him, trying to learn the defense. Uh, that was kind of my first goal was uh, regain these, uh, the new coaching staff's trust. And I know with the guys uh, that's much experience, you've seen this, uh, that many players, you know, uh, he, uh, you know, respected me. That, that, that went a long way for me to earn his respect and his trust like that. So definitely an honor playing for him and uh, have him compliment me and stuff. I'm just trying to get better for him. All right, so what's it like coming in the way you did? You were a sixth-round draft pick in 2018, and yeah. you, you yourself have said, quote, I got drafted, and people are like, oh, we should have gotten this Georgia linebacker. I knew if I messed up, my shot would be gone. How did yeah. you go about approaching your job that first year and making sure that you did stick? Uh, you know, I always said I had a chip on my shoulder. I learned recently that some people think that is negative, uh, but I always got something to prove uh, no matter what the situation is. You know, I've been you keep on saying all Ivy. I was really second team all Ivy my whole time there. Uh, I think for three years I was second. So I was like, dang, there must be three linebackers or DBs better than me every year I was there. So I came in wanting to prove to them that, like, all right, you guys clearly messed up, you know, that choice. And when I first came here, as I said, as you said, they wanted a different linebacker instead of me that late in the, in the draft. Which I didn't get mad about, about being drafted that late, but the fact that you wanted a whole different player that wasn't me kind of, you know, set me off. So I wanted to prove to myself and then to the other people that, you know, you made the right decision. So I came in here trying to, you know, do everything right, uh, be the athlete that I knew I could be and just learn on the fly. Because that was really my first time playing off the ball linebacker. And uh, every day just keep getting better. And, and, that, and the same thing, earn the new coaching. For, my, for me, the new coaching staff's trust and respect, and respect the, the players around me. So. Uh, that kind of just set me uh, uh, on that mindset to improve every day and to keep getting better. All right, so the thing is, though, there's so much more to it than just where you were drafted. For instance, after high school, you did go to Yale. You had a great career there, but then you were not invited to the Combine. What was that experience like? Yeah, they didn't invite me. <laughs> right. I mean, I was out training. Uh, I ended up going to Colorado to see, you know, to train with some uh, guys from these bigger schools and stuff, and I kind of quickly compare myself to them. A couple of the guys did get the combine invite. Um, you know, I, I, I could have been, you know, mad about it, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know what, I'll get this pro day, and I'll get this, uh, if I just train me, what, two, three extra more weeks, um, it might be an opportunity for me to, like, get my numbers even better. So, um, once I hit the pro day, I said, let's put on the show, let me just prove to all these people who clearly – you know, need to see, you know, how athletic I was or whatever, how, you know, the real me. So uh, I saw it as a blessing and a, rather than like, you know, a dip or, you know, coming from a little school, you know, it, they weren't really, you know, at the game how they would be a bigger school. So instead of, you know, being butthurt about it, they just saw it as an opportunity. For you, listen, I want to be very clear about this. I, when I ask you these questions, to me, this is all positive. This is all, it's amazing to me what you've overcome and the career you're having. So when I hit you with this stuff, I want you to know I'm coming from a good, positive place. Having said <laughs> that, you just mentioned Pro Day. I do have to make the point, Yale did not have a Pro Day. So how did you go about getting to a Pro Day? How did that work? So I hit my agent up because I knew, well, Yale did have a Pro Day. It was like, there weren't going to be very many scouts at it, so... I actually went to this, uh, Chase Edmonds had, had went to the combine. We used to play him at Fordham. So a lot of our coaching staff actually transferred over to Fordham that year after we won our Ivy League championship. So um, I knew he would have scouts there from the combine coming to, you know, see him either, you know, do his drills or whatever. So I asked the coaches, you know, can I go to your combine or to your pro day? If you're looking for a second pro day, get in front of more scouts because that was the name of the game at the point. And, uh, you know, our one of our old coaches, I think offensive coordinator was the head coach there at Fordham, you know, he said, yeah, come along. Uh, the pro day was going to be held in Columbia because the snow up there in the Northeast. And so I kind of went to a pro day two weeks earlier than I was supposed to in order to get in front of scouts. And that kind of just blew it out the water. And then later there was a Yale technical pro day where I just kind of did drills in front of like four scouts, really. Um, but you know, my, all my testing and stuff was done at that Fordham pro day early. So I'm really curious, like, what was it like for you to be an Ivy Leaguer in the sense that what was it like on campus when you're going to a school like that, a smaller school, a school that's so great academically, you know, it's different than going to a, quote, football powerhouse where a lot of these kids go to that school because they want that experience. How did the other students, how did your peers re react to and respond to the football team? Were they into it? How into it were they? What was that like? Uh, as a campus, I don't think they were that into the actual sport playing. They were definitely had school spirit no matter what, you know. But uh, really, we had about two, maybe it's depending how good your team was uh, from year to year, but you definitely had two big games, uh, either a Princeton game or Harvard game or maybe a, a Penn or Dartmouth game. Um, but the Harvard game was a big game that every year where the stadium was going to be packed and stuff. But, um, you know, keeping campus-wide interest until that point was sometimes a struggle. 
so really you're out there just playing for yourself. You're not really uh, playing for, you know, the support of the, the, your student uh, friends around you because they're over there focused on the school and stuff. You got a lot of enterprise. It's like I, uh, me and my team want to beat you and your team. So uh, kind of learn how to focus. And, and, and when you have a goal, uh, you, know, you, don't, you don't need outside motivation. Everything's kind of intrinsically motivated that I want to do this for, you know, the people I play for and people around me and stuff because we're in this together kind of by ourselves. I, I love that. I love that response. I, I don't love that that's the way that was, but I love that you <laughs> understood that and that you had yeah. to have this intrinsic self-motivation. So now you're all about embracing the ugly and leading the ugly gang. For those yeah. who do not know, yeah. what is the yeah. ugly gang all about? Yeah, there was a little, um, it started really as an inside joke to me and my friends. Some dude called us ugly, but he needed some advice and stuff. So we're like, instead of being mad about it, instead of being like, you know, upset or uh, embracing that bully, and like, we say, all right, we're ugly, whatever we're doing works. So it kind of became a slogan, you got to love yourself, no matter what people think of you, you know, inside, like, whatever you're doing works, just let whoever you are shine and, and, and be you, so... Um, I kind of ran with that. Use the ugly duck is my slogan because it's a in all of us, no matter how we look on the outside. It's about who we are inside and who we know we are to be. That's who we're going to be. Dude, there is a swan in all of us, no matter how we look on the outside. I'll be remembering that one as well. All right, so finally, speaking of the outside, outside your locker room, it seemed like people did not have huge expectations for this team, but here we are in December. You're fighting for a playoff spot. How have you guys been able to maintain and exceed, not maintain, but exceed the expectations and put together the season you have? Now, we still got some work to do. We want to go on this run here at the end of the year. It's kind of just holding everybody accountable. You know, coaches are on us every day, uh, definitely trying to make this run because, uh, you know, we kind of look at it and you ask a lot of the older guys. You know, some people, you know, play a whole career and don't make it to the playoffs. So when you have an opportunity in front of you, you really can't let it go to waste because you never know when you're going to get another one. Um, so every game we're trying to win, and when we see that we can win and when we're playing smart football, I think we're definitely a force to be reckoned with. So we're going to take this to the – for the rest of the year and definitely try to go on this run here. What a great story. What a great journey. Atlanta is in second in the NFC South. They're at San Francisco on Sunday. Their linebacker, Foye Oluokin, my guest. Foye, great to have you on again. Really nice uh, to thanks, talk to you, man. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Yep. Good luck. You too. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's always fun.